Hey guys, good morning. Um, it is Monday, May 14th, 12.06 a.m. I am going to be, well, I just uh, got out of prayer. And we're going to be kicking off a new series. God told me to read about um, David and Joseph. And for the next couple of days, we're going to be looking about um, Joseph, we're going to be getting into the story of Joseph. I know that both characters are very familiar, but we're going to have like a little Bible study about both of them because some of the things that both of them experience, I'm experiencing or have experienced. And what I just went through, the devil just threw a very, 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 very low blow. I have gone through a lot of warfare concerning different things over the years, but this, this low blow that he just threw instead of it causing me to react or engage any more than I needed to, it's fueling my passion to release the word. It's fueling my passion to pray. It's fueling my passion to dig in. It's fueling my passion to just go forward because how I was and um this is not a this is not a video where you'll see me so it'll just mostly be like voice but how I was before I was saved I was reserved but I was very bold and I was very radical and uh, about there were a number of other things that go along with that and what happened was when I got saved God took a lot of those same qualities but used them for his kingdom used them for his good so my 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 passion my um my purpose the temper that I had, all of the negative things that I had, all of the negative ways that I was ready to pop off, all of the different things, God shifted that and turned it into passion for his glory, turned it into passion for me to do spiritual damage and warfare, turned it into passion for me to pray, turned it into passion for me to get more into his word, right? That's, that's, that's what he did. So this series was actually birthed from out of that and God is good we know that Romans 8 says that he causes everything to work together for our good he causes it to work together for those that love him that he predestined he causes everything to work together for our good so we're going to be reading about Joseph uh, we're going to be reading Genesis 37 38 40 through 45 and then 49 through 50 that's going to be a three-part series where we're going to read uh, some of the some of the chapters tonight. And then we're going to, over the next two days after that, or however God leads, then we're going to um, release the rest of it. And then we're also, I'm also going to be um, talking about David. So we're going to be reading 1 Samuel 16 and just, you know, reading through certain things about um, David. The series will be about 10 days or less. So you guys that may be going through right now or, you know, you believe in God for certain things. You have certain seed in the ground. You're standing on certain promises. And it's like he just, he's trying you. He, he didn't try everything else and it didn't work. So he's trying you from different angles with different people that you didn't expect. Be encouraged and don't give up. And you keep on moving forward to do what the Lord is calling you to do. Amen. That's your word. So I'm going to be coming. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I'm going to be coming from the New Living Translation. And we're going to start. Before we start, let's pray. I just came out of a deep praise and worship. I really just had to give um, all of that to God because it came out of nowhere. But the uh, so many words were birthed after that attack. Hallelujah. So guess what? We have the victory. The enemy don't play fair. I don't play fair either. Somebody's going to be encouraged on today. <laughs> Somebody's going to get their victory. Somebody's going to receive their breakthrough in the name of Jesus. What the devil tried is not going to work. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Father God, we thank you that this prayer, Father God, in this word will touch minds and hearts that it needs to touch. We thank you that it will transform lives and situations, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that you alone will receive all the glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Now, for the next three days or so, some of you may need to meditate on these verses. I'm going to give them to you. As we read the word of God, I'm going to read it into your ear gates, and you can follow along, um, as well as leave a comment at 
out of what you got out of the video or, you know, when we were reading a particular verse, what did you get out of it? But for some of you, for the next three days, you need to read or for however long God gives you, stand on these words um, and read them and let them minister to you. Isaiah 54, Isaiah 26, verse 3, Romans 8, Psalms 27, Psalms 23, Matthew 6, 33, Matthew chapter 7, verse, uh, I think it's verse 7, we're talking about at seek knock. Um, Judges chapter 7, Exodus 14, Luke 6, 38, Psalm 68, verse 1, Psalms 1. Um, some of you may need to read Psalms 54. And then I don't have the scripture in front of me, but um, the, um, the verse that's talking about Elisha and Gehazi. When he lied and said that um, the man of God told Naaman to, you know, to get the gift. And I'll post it, but the, you guys need to read that. So I'm going to probably leave that in the description box. Um, but some of you may need to uh, meditate and read those things. God has also given a few of those scriptures for me to read. And I wanted to share some of those with you guys as well. So let's, let's read about, um, first we're going to read about Joseph. So right now in this setting, I'm going to try to read um, Genesis 30, 38 through 41. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because I know sometimes my iPad or my phone will cut off, you know, with the recording. But I'm definitely going to release this word. Yeah, I'm going to release it. So if you have your Bibles or your iPads, go with me to Genesis 37. Genesis 37. And you guys may see the screen going off and on. I have my iPad here. Um, and I really don't have like anything to hold it. Maybe I could just try to hold it up like that, I guess. I really don't have anything to like hold it up. So I guess I just have to try to hold it up like this. Mm -hmm. So let's read Genesis 37. And we're talking about Joseph, guys. Joseph's dreams. Now, just a little backdrop. Joseph, um, Joseph was one of the the twelve sons of Jacob. So we know it was Abraham who was the founding father of the faith. There was Abraham who had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Of course, they had other kids and things, but just giving a little backdrop. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had twelve sons. Joseph was one of them. Joseph was very favored. Joseph was. Um, you know, one of the favorite chosen sons. Um, you guys can read more about it in your private times. But he went through a lot. And I relate to him a lot. Not saying that I went through exactly what he went through, but I can relate to a lot of the things that he had to endure or a lot of things that he had to go through as far as rejection, as far as having to go through certain things to be promoted, as far as being the one in the family that God used for certain things or wanted to use for certain things. So there's so many different things that I can relate to Joseph about. And I'm sure there's a lot of you on here that can also relate to him. And even if you don't know who he is, you know, as we read along, you'll probably, um, you know, see, okay, well, this connects with, you, you probably say something like, okay, well, I can connect with this or I can relate to that um, dealing with Joseph. So let's um, continue reading. So Joseph's dreams. Genesis 37, New Living Translation. So Jacob settled again in the land of Canaan, where his father had lived as a foreigner. This is the account of Jacob and his family. When Joseph was 17 years old, he often tended his father's flocks. Doesn't that sound like David too? David would also tend to his father's flocks. So it says he worked for his half-brothers, the sons of his father's wives, Bilhah and Zilpah. But Joseph reported to his father some of the bad things his brothers were doing. So we see that, you know, right here, all blood is not all blood is not good blood. Because even though they were his brothers, you know, it they still was some tension in between there, as you'll learn as we read along the story. You can tell that he's honest. We can tell that he has integrity. We can tell that he's a hard worker because he's tending the flocks. You know, flocks, um, are not it's not something easy that you can tend to you have to be attentive to them 
you have to make sure that you're paying attention to them. If one strays away, you have to try to make sure you keep them with the group. You know, you have to. So it's showing like he's also he has good leadership qualities as well. Right. So it says Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Somebody say favor and favoritism. Because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So he's like he's special to him, right? He has a, 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 a sensitive spot for him, right? So one day Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their father loved him more than the rest of them. They were jealous. They couldn't say a kind word to him. Now, Joseph didn't ask for his father to love him that way. Joseph didn't ask for his father to make him that coat. He was favored. He was anointed. He was appointed. God approved him. But because they weren't receiving it, or maybe they didn't position themselves to do that or that wasn't for them, they hated him. They couldn't even say a kind word to him. How do you think that would make make you feel if you were in, in a situation with that with someone that's supposed to be your brother, someone that's supposed to be close to you, right? Praise God. So it says one night Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before mine. His brothers responded, so you think you will be our king, do you? Do you actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more. Look, they hated him even more. They hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. Now, there are some of you on here that may be going through certain things because you're sharing the right information with the wrong people or you're speaking it out of season or it's supposed to be between you and God and you're releasing it to other people. Um, some years ago, about seven, eight years ago, I learned not to do that. And you know, sometimes we still have our slip ups or you know, you have people that you feel you could trust or you know, the Lord give you a clearance to speak with them. But it's some that, you know, you don't need to share everything with everyone. Everybody is not genuinely happy for you. Everyone cannot handle certain things that God gives you because he gives you the visions and the dreams that he gives you for a reason. So there are certain things that you don't share with certain people, even people that may be familiar to you. If God gives you a clearance to release to share, yes, share. But if he doesn't, don't, because you're going to see what that does. And even though they hated him all the more, they still couldn't stop the plan of God over Joseph's life. Just like some people may be hating you, but they cannot stop the plan of God over your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so they hated him all the more. So then, so, so nine. So soon Joseph had another dream. And again, he told his brothers about him. Listen, I have had another dream. He said. The sun, moon, and eleven stars bowed low before me. This time he told the dream to his father as well as to his brothers, but his father scolded him. What kind of dream is that, he asked. Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow to the ground before you? But while his brothers were jealous of Joseph, his father wondered what the dreams meant. Some of you, rejection, remember I said, some of you may have parents or friends or family members or a spouse or a co-worker or people that... You know, you thought you were in good standing a relationship with that doesn't understand the dream. They're trying to talk you out of the dream. They don't believe in you. And it hurt. It hurts. It may hurt you. You may feel like, you know, God, you gave me this dream. Why, why aren't these people supporting me? Why can't they see where I'm coming from? Why don't they see the vision? God gave you the vision for a reason. I'm praying that God will release wisdom and knowledge with how to execute your vision. And it doesn't even have to be you physically scribing or trying to execute it. He may give you a download to do it a different way, a different strategy to do it a different way. So this also goes to show me that even though his, his father loved him and, and favored him and cared about him, he had a special place in his father's heart that his father was not properly covering him. Because to me, I don't know if it seems to you, but to me it seems as if when his father said that, when he just said, like, he's siding with the brothers instead of um, instead of him or, you know, pulling him aside and speaking with him about it. So it's, it's showing me that God reveals certain things to certain people in his specific timing. Everybody is not supposed to see or understand everything that you're going through or understand God's vision for your life or understand why God is telling you to do certain things that he's telling you to do. Because he pondered it in his heart, right? But it doesn't say that he stood up for him. 
in during this instance. It doesn't say that he pulled him to the side and, you know, spoke more about it or tried to figure out more about it. So things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. So everything that looks bad isn't always bad. That's for someone on here. So 12. So let's just continue to read because um, it's already on 15 minutes and we still have a couple more chapters to read until we come back on um, tomorrow or the next session. So it says, um, soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready and I will send you to them. Now, guys, I, guys, I want you to um, pay attention to what we're reading because this also kind of happened to Joseph, um, David. We're, we're reading about Joseph now, but David was told from his father to go and check on his brothers when they were at war against um, the Philistines and Goliath to take them lunch. And so you see they both were tending the field. They both had brothers that were jealous of them. Like they both, you know, they can relate. So he said, I want you to go, you know, I want you to... Um, Go, go see about them. Get ready. I'm going to send you down to go see about your brothers. So Joseph replied, I'm ready to go. And he he's not even realizing that this trip is not going to be a regular trip. Some of you are, are going through situations where you're in a state or you're in a place where you never thought you'd be there. The, the, the day seemed usual. The day seemed normal. And then by the end of the night or before the day was out, your life was changed. Your your world was turned upside down or your life was shifted. And the same way that that could happen to you, God could shift things around in your favor. God can begin to bring winds of change in your favor. You know, there's a balance. There's a balance. Throughout the good times, you, you, you have God. Throughout the bad times, you have God. But he's still God and he's growing you through that season. I hope what I'm saying is making sense to some of you. I'm trying to give it to you guys how I feel like he's speaking it to me and showing it to me in my mind. So he said, I'm ready to go. So he's ready to go. And so it says, and go and see how your brothers and, and the flocks are getting along. Jacob said, then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way and Joseph traveled to Shechem from their home in the Valley of Hebron. When he arrived there, a man from the area noticed him wandering around the countryside. What are you looking for? He asked. I'm looking for my brothers, Joseph replied. Do you know where they are pasturing their sheep? Yes, the man told him. They have moved on from here. But I heard them say, let's go on to Dothan. So Joseph followed his brothers to Dothan and found them there. So now Joseph is about to be sold into slavery. Some of you have been loyal to people and they still betrayed you. But God has a plan. God has a plan. I want you to read that Romans 8. So Joseph sold him to slavery. When Joseph's brothers saw him coming, they recognized him in the distance. As he approached, they made plans to kill him. Here comes the dreamer, they said. Come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns. We can tell our father a wild animal has eaten him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. One thing about it, y'all, what God has for you is for you. No demon, no devil, no spirit can stop that. Them talking about you can't stop it. Them sending evil against you can't stop it. God's word is the final authority. And God watches over his word to perform it. So whatever God has spoken over you, no man that speaks against you can stand and, and win. And live to be in the presence of God. Speaking those things because God's word will begin to go in and shift the situation around. So... Let's keep reading. So, but when Reuben heard of their scheme, he's one of the brothers, he came to Joseph's rescue. Let's not kill him, he said. Why should we shed any blood? Let's just throw him into this empty cistern here in the wilderness. Then he'll die without our laying a hand on him. Reuben was secretly planning to rescue Joseph and return him to his father. So when Joseph, God will always send a Reuben. How many of you know that? God will always send a Reuben. So when Joseph arrived, his brothers ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. Now, while I'm reading this, I want y'all to imagine what's, what's going on. If this were you, and you being obedient, and you doing your best, and you doing what, what your father instructed you to do, and then to encounter this. Now, I want you to look at it in the sense of your physical father, but more so your spiritual father. You're being obedient to do what God has called you to do. You're being obedient to do your best. You're being obedient to, you know, stay on the right track and stay on the right path. And then just imagine this happening. Imagine this sort of attack. Um, um, imagine this sort of abuse, this sort of rape, 
this sort of situation happening. Like, how would you feel if you were Joseph? So Joseph arrived, and it's, this shows the anger. This shows the rage. Like, they didn't even try to befriend him. They didn't try to be fake with it. They didn't try to say anything. They got straight to the point. They ripped off the beautiful robe he was wearing. They were jealous of his cover, and they were jealous of the favor the whole time. Right, they ripped that off. Then and they outnumbered him, obviously. So it says then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now imagine all that force. Imagine one one man's rage against you. They angry with you, they pissed with you. And imagine the anger that will come from them for them to grab you. But imagine all the other ones that were angry with him. Imagine all the all of those spirits that were attacking and gang banging against him. But look at God, because God does have a plan, even in the midst of you going through what you're going through, right? So it says, they they threw him, they grabbed him, they threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Look at God. People think that they're setting you up to fail, and look at God. God is causing that situation to work out for you, just like he caused it to work out for Joseph. A cistern that was empty. He could have went in there and drowned. God caused the cistern to be dry. God has a plan. God is a very detailed and thorough God. God has a plan. And I hear him right now up in the heavens laughing because what the enemy thought he was sending in that was going to shift and change you, God is using that. God is sending that back into the camp of the enemy. And God is shifting and changing things in your life in your favor in the name of Jesus, just as he did for Joseph. Hmm. Then just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming toward them. It was a group of Ishmaelite traders taking a load of gum, bomb, and aromatic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Now, I think in one of my other videos, guys, when we were doing the 66-day challenge, I think I we came from Genesis 37. We did because we read this. Um, you guys can feel free to go check out that video or those videos. But I gave a little backdrop, I, I believe Holy Spirit gave a little backdrop about the Ishmaelites. So remember we were talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac was the promised child. Ishmael was a child that was, that was conceived out of their flesh. And they, they both represented two different nations, two different things. And these, these Ishmaelite traders go back from Ishmael. I'm not going to get deep into that. That's not the focus. Um, I think I broke it down in one of those other videos. But um, these are not regular um, traders that are coming through. This is very symbolic of the kind of traders that are coming through. So um, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain? And then, look, it's also different nations, different tribes, different promises, different covenants here that's going on. Ishmaelite. Is dealing with a different land, a different territory. These were Israelites. Abraham was was of the covenant. So Jacob, Israel, um, you know, Isaac, his children, they were covenant of the covenant of Israel. So this is two different worlds going on here right now, guys. So Judah said to his brother, we know Judah means praise. What will we gain by killing our brother? His blood would just give us a guilty conscience. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. So, look, there was a Judah and there was a Reuben. They all were still kind of wrong to me. But there was a Judah and there was a Reuben. And God still used wisdom with this situation and looked at bad. But he, he shifted it around for the good. Hallelujah. So, guess what? So, he said, what will we gain by killing our brother? His blood would just give us a guilty conscience. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all... After all, and then I'm looking at a comma. Somebody say, after all. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. So when the Ishmaelites, who were Midianite traders, came by, Joseph's brothers pulled him out of the cistern and sold him, sold him to them for 20 pieces of silver. And the traders took him to Egypt. Now, I'm looking at the bottom of my notes. Um, you know how the Bible has, like in the footnotes, little things. The 20 pieces of silver, this is equivalent to 8 ounces or 228 grams in weight. And who else do we know that was sold for some money that wasn't Jesus Christ, that wasn't, that wasn't worth it? 
and when you really look at it, but God still worked it out for his perfect plan. I'm telling y'all, God is working out things right now. Just keep your eyes stayed on him. So what does it say? So it says, and the traders took him to Egypt. So now he going to a different land. This was a day that looked like every other day. This was a day where he went and checked on his brothers. This was a day that was normal for him, and it ended up changing his life. But in the midst of you going through all of that, God still has a plan. That's for somebody on here. Yeah, it's for somebody on here. It wasn't just for me to just read it and be encouraged with my situation. Because what's happening with me is I have good seed in the ground. There are certain words, prophetic words that have come forth. And there's certain breakthroughs that are on the horizon that the enemy don't want me to get. I have overcome so much where he just knew I was supposed to be dead so long ago. And he's shocked and he's amazed and he's appalled that God still have his hands on me. And that God is still using me in the capacity that he's using me. And that I've overcome everything that he sent to kill me. He's amazed. He's angry, but he's a defeated foe. So he does. He doesn't. It's like he doesn't understand that because of all the things that I went through, saved, unsaved, whatever. When you when you come for me, you just have to make sure that you come in correct. And what God is is having me to be by being in His kingdom is taking what the enemy threw at me and instead of retaliating, instead of doing it the wrong way, he fuels it into passion. And it's like, uh, it's, it's like an atomic bomb being sent back into the camp of the enemy. And see, not only was I going to get blessed and encouraged by this word and allow God to work out the situation, you finna get blessed. You're going to get blessed and be encouraged by the word and know that God is also working out your situation. And God is so good and so great. He's not just going to let us read this one chapter. We're doing a whole series on it. So it's like, take that devil. What you think about that? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So, he, they sold him. So, now he's going to a whole new land. He's going from something that was so familiar. And how many of you maybe woke up and, you know, the day seemed fine. Like, you going to work seemed normal. You doing this seemed normal. And then before the end of the day, it's like your whole life was changed upside down. There was a car accident. You lost a loved one. You lost a job. You know, you felt some type of way. Different things begin to happen. God is working out everything for your good. Don't give up. You know, you have to just keep the faith. And he's sending you this word to let you know that you're not alone. So it says, Sometime later, Reuben returned to get Joseph out of the cistern. When he discovered that Joseph was missing, he tore his clothes in grief. Then he went back to his brothers and lamented. That's worse than crying, y'all. That's like very like being serious in grief. So it says, the boy is gone. What will I do now? Then the brothers killed the young goat. Look how evil they is, y'all. Then the brothers killed the young goat and dipped Joseph robe, Joseph's robe in its blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? Look how evil they are. They can't even say, doesn't this robe belong to Joseph? Doesn't this robe belong to our brother? They say, doesn't this robe belong to your son? I'm not even going to say what I was just going to say, but that's like some mafia type stuff, man. That's just like, that's just disrespectful. That's just so, but you know, I'm not going to get into that, but that's some stuff that's just like cold, like cold world. Like that is so cold, man. That is so wrong the way they did that. But God have a plan. So then the brothers killed the young goat and dipped Joseph robe in his blood. I got to say it again. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at the hate. You can feel the hate. Look at what we found. Doesn't his robe belong to your son? Their father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it's my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. He even asked them. He even realizing that all y'all shady, y'all jealous of him. What, what, what did you do? What did y'all do? He ain't asking them any questions. He ain't interrogating them. He just... He just goes and makes assumptions. And assumptions can be dangerous if assumed the wrong way. That's for somebody right now. So this is what he said. He said a wild animal must have eaten him. Immediately trusted his 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 um he he immediately trusted his own assumption. He didn't go and pray about it. He didn't ask the Lord to open his eyes to see are they telling me the truth or what? He just went to his assumptions. Can't always be emotion led or Led by you, you can't. It'll get you cased up. It get you cost up. 
because we're we're reading it right now. What, what J Jacob didn't even say, hold on, what did y'all do to him, or what's really going on, or even he didn't question him. Like he just he went by his own assumptions. So it says, um, mm -hmm. it says a wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. So then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Weeping is worse than crying, y'all. So that's, that's that's kind of deep situation going on. So meanwhile, the Midianite traders arrived in Egypt where they sold Joseph to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Potiphar was captain of the palace guard. God is a very detailed God. We're hearing all of these things for a reason about who Potiphar is who pharaoh is who they are what positions they have because when god elevates you he'll elevate you in the midst of those that probably didn't think that you were qualified to receive the elevation now we're already on 31 minutes i noticed that my ipad times out before an hour so if i have to come back and record the other parts i will but let's just continue so that was genesis 37 um you guys leave a comment or send an email if of what you got out of this session or how this relates to you or how this situation may relate to you or what would you have done if you were Joseph or which character you know in the story do you most relate to so we're going to skip 38 because that's talking about Judah and Tamar I didn't feel led to read that now we're going to read Genesis 39 let me look at my book okay Genesis 39 talking about Joseph and Potiphar's house when Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar. Can you guys just imagine what's going on, how this, how his world was of what we read and now what's going on. So when Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of the guard for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. This word is for someone as well, too. You don't have to touch the situation. Let God be God. Vengeance is God. God knows how to avenge you. You pray for those that have wronged you. You pray for them. Keep doing what God is calling you to do. Keep moving forward and allow God to avenge you. Don't take anything into your own hands. You don't need any extra blood or any extra warfare. You praise your God. You stay in him. You believe him and you let him fight the battle and give you strategy on how to overcome. See, my strategy was saying what I had to say. And leaving the situation alone, blocking what I needed to block, deleting what I needed to delete, and repenting for saying certain things that I said. Because the old me was really trying to, to be resurrected and come back. But when, when you're in Christ, you got to daily crucify yourself. So my strategy was after doing that, getting back into my prayer closet, putting on some praise music, listening to the word of God, praising, praying, repenting. And I got so much fresh downloads from God that came and then he is showing me, okay, so it's not so now you're going to be doing this series again. It was just like the 66 day challenge, but he said you're going to be focusing more on Joseph and David. So he may give you a different strategy or, you know, you, you give your situation to God and allow him to get you. You don't retaliate. You don't go back. You don't. And even if you do, you repent and you keep going forward because God will begin to show you things. And God will begin to to speak to you. And when it's, and when it's his timing, he's going to do things in his timing, his way, not your way. So that's that's for somebody to encourage somebody. So he was purchased um, by Potiphar. We just read about him in um, 37. An Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of the guard for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So this is like, look at wherever, I don't know what country you are are in i'm in um the u.s but this is like think about the president and this person is like connected to the president but god is going to cause you to i don't even want to get into what we're going to read because <laughs> the story is so so many twists and turns but the way that god worked it out it's, it's only the way that god could get the glory my god hallelujah so the lord was with joseph and somebody needs to receive this anointing that is god was with joseph 
even through he the, though he was going through hell and going through all he went through, that God will be with you. So the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. Somebody say favor. Favor, favor. God favoring you anyway. Hallelujah. So he put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. Some some of them don't know that relationship, that workplace, that business, that ministry is blessed because you're there, because your favor of God were to remove you from there, the anointing would flee with a quickness, suddenly. They don't even know. But God favoring you in, in, in anyway. He's favoring you everywhere that you go. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 lets us know that. You just favor. They can't stop it. You favor. So the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph. For Joseph's sake, all his household affairs ran smoothly. Look, he still was operating in the spirit of excellence. And I'm like this too. The Lord be putting this on me. I could be have gone through hell. And when it comes time to work or time to do what God is calling me to do, I, I do my best to allow Holy Spirit to rise so that it's done in the spirit of excellence. And people be looking like, you didn't been through that. You're going through this. And you still doing that? Or are you still? It doesn't make sense to the natural mind because it's not natural. It's spiritual. So this was an anointing that God had put over Joseph. And a lot of you have this same anointing too. In the midst of what you may be going through, in the midst of what you've gone through, you still operating in the spirit of excellence. You still acknowledging God. You still serving God. You're still giving yourself unto him. God going to favor you. You already favor, but he's he's going to favor you even more for that because the anointing is going to increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. So all his household affairs ran smoothly in his crops and livestock flourish. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man, and Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. See, trying to, he's trying to creep in. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. When I say he, I mean the devil. But Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How many of you can relate? How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Look how much love he still had for the Lord. God is honoring y'all on today. You didn't even really know he's honoring you. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her, and he kept out of her way as much as possible. Somebody say integrity. See, and this is what the Holy Spirit showing me. While he was in the... um. You know, tending to the um, the flocks and everything. God was building up his integrity. When he was giving the report for his brothers to his dad, God was building up his integrity. And that was preparing him for where God was going to promote him and bless him. It was preparing him. It was for, it was building up his character. Do you do you guys see that as well? Because that's what I'm seeing. It was, it was preparing him. Mm -hmm. So... The attack coming. He doing the right thing. And here comes the attack. Here comes the devil. He said it will be a great sin against God. He didn't say it would be a great sin against you. He didn't say it would be a great sin against her. He said it would be a great sin against God. So she kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day. But he refused to sleep with her. And he kept out of her way as much as possible. One day, however, somebody say one day. No one else was around when he went in to do his work. She came and grabbed him by his cloak demanding, come on, sleep with me. Joseph tore himself away because, look, hey, he already lost the first coat. The coat, it's, it's not even about the coat. It's about the anointing that is in him and over him. It ain't even about the coat. So he like, listen, you can't have it. You can't have the coat. I, I, I'd rather keep my integrity and keep my heart right and pure with God than please you. No, he like you can keep the cloak, babe. You can keep you can do that. You can keep the you can keep this cloak. So she grabbed him by the cloak, right? Because y'all are reading along with me. She grabbed him by his cloak, demanded, Come on, sleep with me. So Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hand as he ran from the house. This man like, listen, I'm not finna play with you. I'm not I'm not playing with you. This is like I'm not I'm not even engaging you like that, right? 
So then when she saw that she, she was holding his cloak and he had fled, look at the lies. She called out to her servants. Soon all the men came running. Look, she said, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave here to make fools of us. Come on, devil, you need to do better than that. I'm saying that in the side note. So he came into my room to rape me, but I screamed. Look at the lies. So when he heard me scream, he ran outside and got away, but he left his cloak behind with me. The lies. So she kept the cloak with her until her husband came home. Then she told him her story. That Hebrew slave you brought into our house tried to come in and fool around with me, she said. But when I screamed, he ran outside leaving his cloak with me. That don't even sound like Joseph. Some of the lies and different things that they they spreading around on y'all don't even sound like y'all. And it's not even y'all. That's why you got to allow God <laughs> to avenge you in the name of Jesus. So listen. So now it didn't shift, right? So Joseph put in prison. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. And you know when I read, when I, not read, I'm sorry. When, you know when I watch the movies on TBN and stuff or the different um, channels that show the Bible movies? You know, every time I, I watch the Joseph movie, you know, this man, Potiphar is like, he be looking at his wife like, you need to stop the lies. Like, he be looking at his wife like, he know who Joseph is. Like, he know, like, his wife is like a whore, a hoe. He knows she ain't no good. He is like he, or in the movies that, I, that I've seen on certain networks or whatever, it's like he be looking at her like, even though Joseph went to jail, he be looking at her like, you know you wrong. Like, you know this this man didn't do this. And remember that we said in the beginning of 37 that God will take you and, and, and he will put you in positions that people that don't think you qualify for, he will put you in the position. It's, it's just a great story. It has so many twists and turns. It's painful. You, you go through. But the reward and the promotion that God has for you is so worth it. So Joseph put in prison. Let's get back because this thing is, this recording is about to stop and then I'm going to have to come on again, but let's kind of finish up. So Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held and there he remained. But the Lord, listen, look, look how good God is. God is a faithful God. You guys got to hold on to him and not give up. Because he's faithful. You be faithful to him. Continue to be faithful to him. He's going to be faithful to you. So, but the Lord was with Joseph. And just like the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord is with you. So, the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and show him his faithful love. Somebody say faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries. Somebody say favor. So the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. Just like he took care of everything with his father's flocks. Just like he took care. This is not a narrow side note. Just like he took care of everything with Potiphar when he was in Potiphar's house. So the Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. Somebody needs to receive Genesis 39 verses 23. The Lord is with you and causing everything that you do to succeed. So now let's move into Genesis 40. Joseph interprets two dreams. Now, the word right now is that God is allowing some of your, God is allowing your gifts to make room for you. Some of you may be in a season where you're already, where like it's already making room for you. Some of you may be in preparation season. Um, I feel it so strong. Ecclesiastes tell us that there's a time and season for everything. Ecclesiastes 1 um, on down. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 through 8. There's a time and a season for everything. Some of you may just have to till your ground. Some of you are waiting for rain or water. Um, Paul said, I planted Apollo's water, but God brought the increase. Or he watered and Apollo's planted, but God brings the increase. But basically, when you're doing your work, when you're doing what God is calling you to do, and you're standing in your lane, and you're doing what you need to do, God will bring the increase. God will cause that thing to manifest in his timing. Joseph in, is interpreting two dreams. Joseph is a dreamer. Joseph's had dreams. Joseph has gone through hell because of these dreams. And now we're coming into Genesis 40, where some of you are coming into a Genesis 40 that's going to connect with your Genesis 41 that's going to raise you up. And I'm telling you this word is for somebody because I was just going to just read this to myself. 
and, and reflect and meditate over this in my private time. And I felt the Lord so strong say, in the midst of all that you have just went through, release the word so that somebody else can be blessed. Some of you, God is causing your gift to make room for you in the midst of and in front of the eyes that didn't think you were worthy of that. So Joseph interprets two dreams. So sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended their royal master. God, listen, God is a detailed God. God God don't do nothing in vain. God is a detailed God. We read in this, we're seeing all this for a reason. Pharaoh became angry. So guess what? Because guess who in there? So, and, and, and look at this too. If Joseph was still in Potiphar's house when the, the baker and the um, cupbearer came, he would not have been able to interpret the dreams. God causes everything to work together for the good. And we're going to see how important this is as we continue to read on. So, so yeah, so Pharaoh became angry with these two officials. Mm -hmm. And he put them in the prison where Joseph was in the palace of the captain of the guard. They remained in prison for quite some time. And the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph who looked after them. Now, I have to release this before um, because this is another word that comforted me. Jesus had brothers and sisters. He wasn't the only child. He had brothers and sisters, right? Well, he was uh, the holy child of, his, of the divinity and of God's purpose for his life. But we know that Joseph and Mary had other children. And God had showed me um, last night with this situation. He was like, you have to keep being obedient to what I'm calling you to do. You got to be like Jesus. When he was, um, you know, ministering and the strangers was accepting him more than those that were familiar to him, his own family, his own friends, his people that were so close to him and then the brothers and everybody else came the sisters and somebody came to him in the middle while he was doing what God was telling him to do and they was like your brothers and sisters you know I think they said to your mom they're out here waiting for you and Jesus was like listen no who who are my brothers and sisters the ones that hear me and obey the ones that love my father he like listen don't try to come he didn't say this but, but this is how God showed me he's like don't try to come talking about my brothers and sisters outside. Like, first of all, why y'all not? And I'm not taking this out of context, guys. This is how he talked to me. Like, why y'all not in here listening to the word? Y'all want me to come to you, but no, you need to come to the level of God. I'm not coming down to your level. So that's for somebody on here. Like, don't be swayed because of who's here or who's not here or who understand or who don't understand. Or who's supporting or who don't under or who don't support. You have to be faithful and you have to be committed and you just have to do what God is calling you to do. You cannot be swayed and you cannot be moved by your emotions. You cannot be swayed and you cannot be moved by what's going on or what they said or this or that. You got to be like Jesus. You got to say, listen, my mother and brothers and sisters, uh-uh. The, the people that I need to be connected to is right here who, who love God and who's obeying God and who hungry for God. That was one thing he showed me. Then it was another where I'm not sure if it was the Passover feast or something, but they wanted Jesus to go down. But if he would have went down at that certain time, that certain way, the people that were waiting for him, the, the Pharisees that the statue, this is not in the notes. In fact, I'm, I don't even have notes. Every time I come on here with these um, soul sessions, these, these broadcasts, I never have notes. It just be Holy Spirit speaking straight to me. He'll give me a verse. He'll give me a word. I'll have in my journal, like, what chapter it is, and he just flow. So there are no notes. But he showed me this, too, last night after that situation. He was like, um, yeah, there was a time, and I don't have this scripture in front of me either, but I'm seeing it, how he's showing it to me. There was a time where um, Jesus could have went down there or whatever, and his, it wasn't time for him to go. So the brothers, they tried him, his own brothers. They was like, oh, um... You know, you you this or that. It's the perfect time for you to go down. And he was like, no, stop stop playing games. He was like, this is not the time for me. He said, any time for you, any time is good for you. Any time is the right time for you. But he was like, no, for me, my time has not yet come. And some of you have to be like that. They're 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 trying to challenge you. They're trying to challenge you. They're trying to be like the people where Jesus was on the cross. Oh, you save others, save yourself. She's like, listen, uh uh, it's not time for that. I don't have to prove myself to you. God is my, my defender. God is my provider. God is going to be the one that's going to get the glory out of my life. You don't have to prove yourself to nobody. 
Jesus said for y'all it's the right time because guess what they were not kingdom minded they were not kingdom focused they were not focused the focused and zoomed in or had the purpose the way that Jesus had that, that purpose so you have to be like Jesus and another way you got to be like Jesus is where you got to speak to Peter, but you got to realize that you ain't speaking to Peter. You speaking to the spirit that's trying to operate through Peter. And you got to say, get behind me, Satan. You got to you got to be able to tell people, get behind me. What you saying sound good, but it ain't good because I know what God showed me.